Hi everyone, Dr. Rupa here, ophthalmologist and lover of all things beauty. And today we are gonna be talking about castor oil and if it actually can grow your eyelashes and your eyebrows. So if you're interested in that, stick around. So after my last video on coconut oil, I got a lot of questions about castor oil. And it's probably one of the most common questions I get on all of my different platforms. Whether castor oil actually works, can it be mixed with other things such as Latisse here to get it to grow faster or better. So we're gonna address all of that today. And I actually even bought some so I can investigate what the properties are like myself. So this is castor oil on the left coconut oil on the right and you can kind of see it's a little bit thicker a little bit more like viscous more honey like versus the coconut oil which is much runnier than the castor oil so that could be good and bad the thickness might help it prevent it from getting inside the eye it'll actually stay in place versus the coconut oil my lashes right now are really bad i have nothing on them no mascara or anything i had been doing lash extensions and of course that does you know and some people can really make their lashes fall out or it can cause them to shorten so that's what happened to me and now i'm just riding it through and trying not to use any kind of lash serum for now and I've been investigating DIY routes. So coconut oil is a topic that I had addressed earlier. And castor oil is another plant oil that a lot of people have been using, specifically in the Middle East and India for a centuries basically now for their hair as well as their eyelash and their eyebrow growth. Now, does it actually work? Castor oil comes from a plant called Ricinus communis and it's a bean. So that bean is actually really, really allergenic. Basically, some people can get so allergic to it by even touching the, the leaves or the seeds and they have like a 10 out of 10 reaction in terms of allergies. So one thing you do need to make sure is whether or not you are allergic to it. So don't just go putting it on your eyelids to start with. I would do a little patch test. So what you wanna do for a patch test is just apply a small amount of the ingredient, typically to the inner section of your skin right there on the elbow. So I just put a little bit right there. And then you wanna cover it up with a bandage for at least 24 hours, because as I've mentioned before, you can have delayed allergic reactions. So if you are someone that's atopic or sensitive and has allergic type skin, you probably wanna do this with the castor oil prior to putting it on your eyelids. Just because it's natural, just because you buy it from the organic grocery store, doesn't mean that it can't cause problems for you because it can. And I think that's the number one thing that I get a lot of patients asking me about is they just assume because something is organic or clean beauty or, or you know, comes from a plant that it's not toxic and it can be. So not that castor oil is toxic, but it can cause allergies. All right. So let's get into whether or not it works. Basically, castor oil is a monounsaturated fatty acid, and it has a couple different properties which are great for improving the look of the eyelashes. Now I'm gonna start with saying there is absolutely no scientific evidence that states that castor oil promotes lash or eyebrow growth. So castor oil does have linoleic acid, and that has a lot of great anti-inflammatory type properties, so some people have thought that it's really good for hair growth and lash growth and because of those, those properties. It can be antibacterial, it can have antioxidants too. But again, no studies have actually shown that it causes lash growth. What it does have is because it's got this fatty acid, this long chain monounsaturated fatty acid, it's a humectant. And a humectant is just something that draws in water. It loves moisture. And as a result, it retains a lot of moisture. So when you put it on your eyelashes, it's going to make them look plumper. It's going to make them look thicker and glossier because it's drawing in the water. You get that kind of refractive look to it. So 
people that swear by castor oil, I believe that's probably what's going on is that they are noticing that the lashes look a lot thicker, but if you actually were to measure the length of the lashes, it's most likely not longer. But a lot of these plant oils can help prevent lash breakage. So that is something that could help because if you're putting on castor oil and your lashes are not breaking as much as they normally would, then perhaps the lash might grow longer. But again, not studied, so I can't say it for sure. There is a lot of castor oil in a ton of different cosmetics. It's in shampoos and conditioners. It's in my all my hair stuff here. So as long as you're not allergic, go for it. Let's see. I'm supposed to just dip it. Let's see how easy it is to put in. And my lashes are clean. Doesn't seem to really get anywhere. And from what I've read, you're just applying it at the base of your lashes. It doesn't sting, doesn't burn. I'm not allergic to it. Those are all really good things. Castor oil is also a moisturizer, so moisturizers are good. That's why it's in shampoos and conditioners and even hair dyes. So that's not a bad thing on your lashes as long as you don't get it into your eye itself. Keep your eye as safe as possible. So shut your eyes firmly. Make sure you don't put too much at the base because you're just trying to grow the lashes better. Just know that there's no scientific evidence for it, but if you like it and you feel like it works for you and gives you the look that you want to, there's not too much of a downside because there have been no reported cases of ocular toxicity from castor oil. Just be mindful that anything that's oil-based that's right near your eyelids can block your meibomian glands, which are the natural oil glands of your eye. You have about 30 to 40 of them on the top and the bottom eyelids and they produce the oil for the tear film so your tears don't evaporate so quickly. But you don't want extra oil there blocking them because then that natural oil can't get out and then that actually can cause dry eyes or even something called blepharitis which is inflammation of the eyelids. The second thing is anytime you've got oil at the base of the lashes, it is a setup for that warm, humid environment of just inflammation, lash mites, you want to make sure if you put it on in the morning at nighttime, really scrub clean with whatever product you normally use to get rid of your eye makeup because you don't want that sticking around when you sleep at night because that could be a problem and you could develop some kind of inflammatory reaction to it on the eyelid skin. If you have blepharitis already or even dry eye syndrome, I would probably caution you against using castor oil just because there is some potential to exacerbate those two conditions, but you could try it and see if you have an issue. But again, hasn't been studied, it's not linked to blepharitis, hasn't been linked to dry eyes, but just looking at the physiology and how you would be applying it, just thinking ahead as to it could be a possible side effect or complication from it. And so if that worries you, I would just go ahead and avoid it at all costs. The only one that's been FDA approved for lash growth is Latisse. All of the other lash serums on the market have actually not been approved for lash growth. So they can't actually say that they grow lashes. They just have to say they, I think they'll use words like and enhances the appearance of lash growth or, you know, if you read the fine lines, it, it'll never say that it actually causes lash growth because they can't, say, they can't make that claim. But castor oil is not making that claim. It's relatively inexpensive compared to the $125 for Latisse. So, and the coconut oil actually has been shown in studies to penetrate the hair shaft. Castor oil has not been so, shown to, to do that. So if you, all things being equal, I would probably go more with a coconut oil versus the castor oil for that reason, because there actually is scientific evidence for coconut oil and hair on the scalp of your head, not for the eyelashes, but at least on the scalp of the head. Castor oil just doesn't have that data. But if you love it and you want to use it and you're not and you're checking in with your eye doctor and making sure that you don't have any untoward reactions to it, then I would go ahead. Just be mindful of the allergic dermatitis that you can get because it is pretty allergenic. Make sure that it doesn't get inside your eye. Look out for conjunctivitis, which would be the white part of your eye here getting pink with the application of it. And if you love it, it'll probably just help 
keep your lashes a little bit healthier and prevent them from breaking, which is not a bad thing at all. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. This is a video I made based on your comments, so I definitely read them. Please let me know if there's something else you're interested in getting an ophthalmologist perspective on to see if it is safe or healthy in the eyes. I am happy to provide that kind of content. I appreciate you guys watching. Please subscribe to the channel, like this video, and let me know what you want to see more of. Thanks for watching, guys. Mahalo. I'm Dr. Rupa.